What's up, dudes? Welcome back to another episode of Ramas Men's Team. Uh, pretty simple. We are a group of guys helping each other make progress towards each other's goals. If you're new to the channel, awesome and welcome. If you want to help support the channel and join our pro team, head over to ramasteam.com pro, where you can contribute to us on a donation basis. We also give you access to exclusive content, mastermind groups, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you on the team. Yeah, we're we're alive. What's up, dogs? Um, so, little update. I uh, Thea got super sick. Like she had a crazy fever last Wednesday. I brought her to the hospital. They thought it was strep throat, so they gave her some antibiotics. Fever did not go down. Eyes got crazy, bloodshot, and we brought her back. I think on Tuesday. And they said it's something called Kawasaki disease, where the um, totally treatable, totally temporary, but it's where the immune system thinks there's a problem and attacks, looks like to attack the body. Like, so crazy fever, bloodshot eyes, um, dry lips, dry hands, dry feet. It's, uh, it attacks the circulatory system. And um, yeah, so, so we had to spend two nights in the hospital. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and then um, she was discharged Thursday. Um, they have to, like, they basically take something like 60 different people's blood. They boil it and treat it and screen it. And all those kind of healthy antibodies or whatever um, cleans out right, and corrects, corrects the problem. And uh, so she's wow. back home. Um, clean bill of health, uh, but, um, you know, stressful and however, silver lining. Yeah, man. Like all I ate was beef jerky, <laughs> um, and like, maybe two salads from like Tuesday morning till we got home yesterday, uh, with the results. Wow. Yeah. Well, number one, okay, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, what the result is that I'm down. I weigh myself today and I'm at 175.8. And remember, I started the year at 192. So I'm down Crazy. like 16 or 18 pounds or something on the year. And I'm yeah, coming for you, yeah, Wes. I'm coming for that five grand. I'm coming for you. Do it. Coming for that six. Yeah, do it. What is uh, I forget? Remind me. What was uh, what was my end destination? One sixty one. Like we're racing, and it's you. If you is your goal. Um, let me just grab the record. One sixty one okay. is your goal. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. By September tenth, you want to hit one sixty three. Okay, six or seven okay. percent body fat. If at any time, and I wanted to hit. Sorry, Wes. I wanted to hit. 175 by September 10th, which means the money aside, if I lose 0.8 pounds yep. uh, in the next two weeks, I'll have achieved my weight loss goal. I no, I'm not going to actually, you know what? Oh, I'm absolutely. not going to make any predictions. But if I dip below <laughs> you at any time between now and when you reach 163, you give me five thousand US dollars, dude, and imagine yeah. the hubris with which you made that bet, like knowing <laughs> I couldn't possibly catch up with you. You know, like oh no, you for you sure only did. said it, I, and like you said it in order to motivate yourself, right? But here we mm -hmm. are, like you're plateauing at one seventy. Right. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I don't want to encourage you. I know you're going to win. But like, first of all, like, yeah, I guess it's been four days and you're still plateauing at um, 169, 170. And I want to know, how does that make you feel? You know, do you feel hurt? Do you feel disappointed in yourself? Uh, but even if I lose, yeah, I win. Yeah. it is motivating because uh, like I'm down, like I said, I'm down almost 20 pounds. 
Oh yeah. No. Um, I, I agree. First of all, great yeah. job. Uh, and no, the only reason that I made the bet is not because I thought that, that I would win. Th- that would be, um, that would not be motivating to me. Yeah. Like it, it's, I wanted to do it enough. And then I, obviously I, I, I backload the payment. Like I make it so large. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, if I lose, it really, really hurts. Like, like I do not want to pay you $5,000. <laughs> um, so no, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was a nice little hybrid of like accelerating the motivation to me and simultaneously accel- accelerating the motivation yeah. to you. Clearly. I mean, you're down a tremendous amount of weight in a handful of days. It's unhealthy. It's unsustainable. It's unrealistic. Well, let, let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. So I, I actually respectfully disagree. I think society tells us that those two things are the same, that unhealthy is like equals unsustainable. Like in so, they have some sort of weird right. relationship. I disagree, right? Like, like, and there's a, lot, a bunch of research right now coming out about fasting. So they're actually saying the opposite about yes. fasting. So that, that like it, fasting, obviously within reason, um, and within biological reason, not society logic, because society logic in like this body shaming type of world, we're like, no, you, you have to eat, you have to eat, you have to eat at least three times a day, like blah, blah, blah. Like, no, don't do that. It's like, no, actually, right. Fasting. There's a lot of science behind it showing that it actually is beneficial. Now you and I are not talking about straight fasting. You're just talking about cutting back calories. Yeah. Now, whether or not you want to do that for 500 days straight is in my opinion, different than whether or not it's biologically yeah. healthy Does yeah that makes sense yeah no no yeah. one no no so. doctor would diagnose me with an eating disorder at this point or like on like you know exactly exactly i'm just not eating junk food that's re- like i'm just not eating carbs yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah and then whether or not sus- it's sustainable i think that comes with shades of gray mm-hmm. as well it's like i just look at them as tools in the mm-hmm. tool belt if I have to accomplish this objective, I will use a different tool. That's it, right? In my opinion, having a handful of tools is what is sustainable, right? If you're about to go on vacation a week from now and you want to look a little bit better, you can use a certain tool that can help expedite that weight loss. It, it, it doesn't have to be, oh, well, you're always in vacation body prep mode. So, and I do think I do think it requires a certain mental healthiness, not necessarily biological, uh, right? Like and meta- uh, metabolic mm-hmm. healthiness. Yeah. So I think you're all good, man. I think you're doing exactly. Sorry, dude. Should. I wasn't listening. I was just thinking about all the ways I would spend that money. But I think I, I think I, I know what you mean. It's like um, there's a there's a good way to do it and a bad way to do it. Or there's a healthy way to lose weight and there's an unhealthy way to lose weight. A lot of it, um, yeah. If you have if you've got a healthy mind and attitude about it, you can like. Um, you can use these hacks to, 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 to drop weight. Uh, like, I don't know, like yeah. if I stopped drinking water or something, I might lose a pound. Yeah. But uh, I'm not going to do that in the long term. I would only do that on the last day or the last hour or something, you know. So right. like, as long as I've got a he- I think yeah. healthy mindset, healthy mental health, healthy attitude are the. Uh, yeah, best- that's the key part. And and. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and what uh, John just said, do, 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 do. John just said, um, I'm with US. I've told people I fast for 72 hours, and that's crazier than, than me weighing 400 pounds. Yeah, it's it, uh, John, I completely agree. It's this like weird pattern of society um, that's like, no, that's not the crazy thing. Fasting for several days straight is not crazy. Many people have done it throughout human history. What is crazy is weighing 400 pounds. That is way more crazy than, than not eating your. 4,000 calories yeah. for the day, right? So I think we always have to use judgment and logic. And one of the guys that Kaizen pulled out uh, was uh, Alex Ramosi. Who is that um, guy? And uh, broadly, so I, I, I actually let me let me bring Kaizen on if he's available. Um, Alex Ramosi, I, I love listening to his stuff. Super smart guy, um, business guy, holistic guy. I think we would all appreciate a lot of his stuff on this team. Um, but yeah, just using logic and reason. So you're not going to die. Yeah, I would not recommend cutting water for multiple days straight. Of course, right? Of course. I would not recommend taking diuretics. Of course. Like all these different types of things. It's within reason. It's reasonable to not eat a certain amount of calories. Guys, what's up, up, King? 
So you've been you've been hopping into yeah. Alex Ramosi. I was listening to. I, I posted it in the <laughs> Discord this morning. Uh, we were driving back from Virginia yesterday, and he did an interview with BiggerPockets dot com about like they were they were talking about um how he got his first million and then he talks about like the difference between getting your first million and then going from one to ten million and then ten to thirty and then thirty on. I'd I'd seen some of his other stuff before. I didn't know it was the same guy. Like he has uh like st- closing sales techniques and stuff that I've seen before. And uh, yep. he kind of talked about how he started by he opened a gym and then he ended up opening chains of gyms and then he was like i think licensing the name and stuff for them and that's how he got started and then he yep. kind of like built from there yeah then li- li- licensing essentially the the processes and then he starts selling the processes to he called yeah. it gym launch um yeah, no, absolutely. But in, in addition to that, so uh, yeah, if anybody wants to check out Alex Ramosi, good stuff. It, I would say mostly business stuff if you're interested in that, and a lot of that sales and and business growth. Um, so, Kaizen, if you don't mind, tell us about your experience of of fast. Yeah, that was so. I was for a this was what a couple of years ago now. I kept getting to the point where I was making excuses, being like. Once I turned 30, my metabolism dropped off and I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't lose weight. Right. So I was saying something about it on a forum online and somebody called me out and they're like, uh, no, you can definitely lose weight. All you need to do is <laughs> yeah, yeah. cut your calorie intake. If you're taking in more calories than you're burning, then you're not going to lose weight. So just don't eat as much. That's it's literally that simple. If, and that was like part of mm-hmm. one of the quotes that um, Alex was talking about was that he had a quote that he had said one of his business mentors told him, which was don't get cute. The analogy that the guy used was like, mm-hmm. if you played backyard football, a lot of people want to do like the razzle dazzle, like hand off to this guy and back and forth reverses and all this different stuff. That's your Liberty place. He's like, what you do instead is you get the two biggest fat guys in front of you and you just run the ball. <laughs> so mm-hmm. his analogy of like, don't get cute, the way he was saying to apply it is like, in like modern, like TikTok time and Instagram, everybody wants to talk about like their special diets or like the paleo or keto or all these different variations of different diets and stuff instead of, of what he was just doing. Like he said, he went to some kind of meeting with a bunch of uh, entrepreneurs and they were like doing all these different, like weird meditation and sauna and cold plunge stuff while he's eating Twizzlers. And he was explaining how just like the low calorie intake is how he was able to maintain his fitness level. And the dude, if you see him in the videos, he's like jacked. So it's not one of those things where it's somebody that's just, spewing out stuff like these fake gurus and stuff and then you look at him and they're like a fat piece of shit this dude is like legit cut he's making money and it's like universal principles that he's talking about so like the business aspect of it applies i think to not just business but like your career as a whole like some of the principles he talks about and then like your health and stuff too oh yeah yeah l- and it let's sounds like on. what west would call the fundamentals 100 percent. yeah i mean so I, I I remember seeing this like great, I don't know if it's a meme or whatever, but it had, you know, keto diet works. And then in parentheses, if you're at a caloric deficit, and then it had like, you know, high carb diet works in parentheses, if you're at a caloric deficit, and then it's like whatever other diet works, if you're in a caloric deficit, um, it's the same math. It's getting to the nucleus math. And what Alex Ramosi was talking about, I believe he's like, he consumes a thousand calories of protein and then whatever else on top of it, it doesn't matter if it's fat, if it's carbs, it's whatever, as long as you're uh, you're consuming under your caloric maintenance level. Um, and that's basically it. It's like, yeah. And dude, I wish, so I work in finance. I see this all the time where people just take rules of thumb and it's usually sexy rules of thumb like Kaizen is referring to, like the TikTok rules of thumb. Like, oh, did you know that if you drink green tea in the morning, right, like you will lose weight. It's like, no, right? Yeah, that sounds really sexy because it's new and it's, doesn't require a lot of effort, but I like, I'll give you guys a hint. 
you will not lose weight if you do that alone. I promise you, right? Like it's all about caloric level. That's it. That is literally it. Hey dudes, sorry for the interruption here. Just wanted to let you know, if you want to join our pro team, go to romasteam.com slash pro. You can help support the channel. You will also get access to exclusive content, masterminds, one-on-one sessions, et cetera. All right, back to the episode. Yeah, the two things he was saying is like, cut your calorie intake and just be more active, like move around more. So like, it doesn't have to just be going to the gym. It can be like, we've covered on a bunch of these other ones, going bike riding, going rock climbing, going to a dancing class, like just doing something where you're moving instead of just like being stationary. Whereas a lot of people, maybe you're in an office job or maybe you're in a job where you have to sit a lot or you're not moving as much. If you find some way to just move around, that's better than nothing. Well, what oh, yeah. I did um, when well, Thea I, I, was at the hospital, yeah, please. Uh, we were on the seventh floor. That's where the pediatric department is. And so it might have been only four or five times, but I walked the stairs to the seventh floor instead of taking the elevator. So it doesn't even have to be like mountain biking, jumping on trails and stuff like Jordan does, but just even like just movement, period. It can be walking. It can be stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and let me uh, throw a curveball to you guys. And I'm looking at my phone because I don't know if you guys do this, but one of the most profound things that I was told to do a while ago was literally just keep a simple list of mental models. Um, so it's kind of like things that stick out tremendously in the day or in the week. And then I just write, write down a list. So I literally, I mean, I could go, like, I could scroll this thing for so long. But – um. I want to throw you guys a curveball. If you don't mind, if I ask, what are the some of the major things that maybe you have learned this year? We're now a significant way percentage through the year. We did our goals in the beginning of the year. We're you know we're a quarter out from the end of the year. Um, what does that look like for you guys? Like, what major mental models or quotes have stood out to you this year or this week or today, et cetera? And I, I will throw one out first to so give you guys time to think about it. Um, one that I heard recently, which I heard this a while ago, but this was great. Um, it's, it says, it is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. And I really like that. So I'll repeat it. It is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. And this is an extension of, which sounds so simple, but it's an extension of incentive, Right. Like oftentimes the answer is not some sort of crazy hocus pocus technique. It's a matter of incentive. I would argue that Ray just lost a disproportionate of weight over the last week merely because we changed one thing, which literally like the one domino changed everything else, a five thousand dollar incentive. And boom, all of a sudden he gets to his goal week in three days rather than three weeks. Pretty crazy. So anyway. What are some things that you guys have learned maybe that stood out to you this year? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to describe them so poetically in terms of mental models, but uh, two, two things I can think of, uh, like, well, a couple of things, like, and I say it every week, but Ryan's, Ryan's uh, activity-based quality time, mm. right? Uh, you know, that is like a less cliche version of Sing Date Night. Right. Actually, yep. and I met, okay. So remember, last time we met, I had the dilemma of wanting to bring to Bill Burr instead of my homie. Right? Yes. Now, because Thea had to be yes. admitted to hospital, and I had to stay by her side. I got the I got like the hail mary out of neither having to bring my friend nor having to bring <laughs> right. So I. I, I, I contacted yeah. my friend and said, look, but I know we had a bromantic mandate plan tonight, but um, I can't make it. I'm giving you both tickets. He said, actually, I'm out of town. I can't do it. Called another friend, called another friend, called another friend. I ended up giving them to my personal trainer. Um, he, yeah, oh, and he, cool. like, he brought his wife. They, he loves Bill Burr, but um, the ticket price was too high, and so it was really – a great outcome. Uh, so activity-based quality time. Awesome. Second of all, skin in, skin in the game, 
like your your, your like your five thousand dollar challenge. I think my personal trainer workouts cost somewhere between a hundred and two hundred dollars per session, right? Which is a heck of a lot of money. But um, would I be going to the gym? Like, how many times have I gone to the gym alone this year? Twice, maybe. How many personal trainer sessions have I had? Three a week for the last two and a half months. So that is, you know, magnitudes of order larger than my, like, no money, no skin oh, yeah. in the game. So putting your money where your mouth is, paying for something, and you've talked about this before, Wes, with, like, skills courses and whatnot, right? So I've lived that firsthand yep. with the working out and paying for it. Um, it's already at the point where she's like, it's too expensive. We have to, you know you know, we need a plan B. I'm like, this was your idea, <laughs> right? Like this was your idea. And now I'm thriving and you want to um, try and do it like independently the free way. So activity-based quality time, having skin in the game. Uh, and then the third one is meditation like I've found, I've like experienced, and I've talked about it before, about like I shouldn't be driving unless I've meditated, right? Just because the, the road rage yeah. factor is like triple or whatever. So like this year I've gone from like trying to meditate in a regular way to like really knowing and feeling and understanding the mental health benefits of meditating every day. So those are the three mental right. models that come to mind in terms of um, Eureka moments this year. How about you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Well, let me, if you don't mind me, let me riff on that second one, that the second idea uh, that you said, I, I come across this pattern in life all the time and I, you know, constantly just my friends from where I'm from in Philly, like they'll, they'll bust my balls for like, you go to four different gyms. Like, why would you even, why would you even pay a hundred dollars for one gym? You know? Um, so the the pattern that the yeah exactly cousin um so the my response in my own head and oftentimes verbally depending on how comfortable I am with them is is how much are you willing to pay for no results so yeah you could pay thirty dollars a month for twenty four hour fitness but you get if you're not going then you're paying thirty dollars a month for no results versus Ray you're paying several hundred if not a thousand dollars a month for uh, for your for your fitness coach, but you're getting results. So, dude, I see this all like literally all the time. Yeah, look at the, the, the Arnold, bro. Um, I literally see this all the time. I was talking to a client not too long ago. <laughs> Funny enough, uh, uh, multimillionaire, and she was telling me how she can't go to the pool at her gym for some reason because it still had like COVID restrictions for some crazy reason. And I was like, oh well, why don't you go to the gym that I go to? Yes, it's a little expensive. Costs two hundred bucks a month. Now this is a multimillionaire. She's like, I can't. She's like, I can't do that. And I said, Well, don't you want to swim? She's like, Yeah. I said, But the gym that you go to solely for the purpose of swimming is not allowing you to swim. So you are paying literally for nothing. But because your mind is distracted by contrasting it with another payment rather than the result, it's so weird. Humans can be so irrational sometimes. So the mental model that I use is like, How much do you want to pay for no results? I will pay for results. That's what I want. I don't want to pay for a medium to get to the result. I am paying for the results. Whatever increases my probability for the results the most. The medium is it also so guys. It, well, it reminds you. me of what you say. The good plan you follow is better than the great plan you don't. That's another iteration of yep. that. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. If you're paying for it too, you're uh, the higher the entry level, the more likely the people that are also going are more committed. So you're going to be around more people that are more committed to it rather than the $10 a month for Planet Fitness. Um, I got two, two and a half, I should say. Number one this year was the yeah. book, The One Thing. I thought I've talked about, about it before. Basically, like finding the what's the yeah. one thing that's getting the most results? What's the one thing that if I knock out, it'll make the Donamo? Domino, yep. the domino effect, yep. knock everything else down. <laughs> um, yep. That's a big one. And then I know it's stupid to make this one number two, 
But number two is just remembering you're going to die. So a lot of the times like it's easy to get worked up about little insignificant shit that doesn't really matter, like your work or little, little things that are inconveniences to where like if you died that day or like you're like you're getting ready, you got in an accident and you're like dying and you're like, I wasted my life worrying about this insignificant shit that doesn't matter uh, when I should have spent more time yeah. like talking with people that I care about or love or being able to give back what I, whatever it is that you have, whatever your light is, if you want to go like that woo woo level, and just remembering that like all this little shit doesn't really matter. Don't let it affect you. The opinions of other people will not pay your bills. Don't give a shit. Like when you work out, it's, I, I see people do it all the time. They'll like look at other people doing stuff instead of like focus on what they're doing instead, yeah. which kind of gets into number three, which I'll, I watched it a couple times this week. There's a video that I'll post it in the Discord, but it's about like being able to basically like open up your expression, um, being comfortable, and then like building onto the. There's a book called The Winner Effect that I don't think in America you can get the audiobook version of it for one one reason or another you can get the paperback version but it's the winner effect and they have a bunch of different studies about this concept called the winner effect but you're basically like stacking wins the more wins that you make it raises your in men it raises your level of testosterone there's a bunch of different side effects that go along with it and part of that is like you feeling comfortable with expressing yourself the more able that you're able to just feel comfortable like different levels of doing things and uh, being comfortable and authentic in the way that you express or show emotion or just like put yourself out there that number one, it attracts people to you more because people want to be around that person. That is like that source of like the life of the party or not w without sounding like douchey, but just that has that energy that like good energy that people want to be around yep. and gravitate towards. It's like the warm end of the pool. And then, that kind of just helps everything else. Like people want to network with that kind of person because that's usually somebody that's more positive. They want to see what you're doing, how they can apply it to whatever their goals are. And then the more that you are that, that you're just putting out that good positive energy, that's like giving, giving value to other people. And that creates an effect where you give so much that people feel almost like guilty in taking it. So they want to, uh, reciprocate or uh, give back to you in some kind of way, which you also kind of have to be receptive to that. That gets to a certain level too, but just those three key things. The one thing, you're going to die. Stop caring about the little bullshit and then be yourself. Don't be afraid to be yourself and just don't worry about what other people are doing or what they're thinking. Focus on what works for you and then just keep doing that. What would be an example of one of those things for you this year that you have used that gave you results? So the more that you do that kind of stuff, the more that you're going to have people ask you to do stuff. So you do have to say no to a lot of things. Like I have people that will ask me to do social media marketing for them and that doesn't pay me enough to make me want to do it. So I'll say no. Um, and it goes back to like, don't be cute. Do what works. What works for me? What is going to make me right. get the most returns? Okay, coding. So I focus my time and my effort on coding. What does that mean that I have to do? I have to cut out listening to podcasts or watching videos that don't really help me. I can't watch TV shows or movies or that kind of crap or play video games because that does it add anything to who I am or what I'm able to produce. So I have to cut a lot of the bullshit, all the fluff or whatever. It's like I could sit and meditate for two hours, but I could also meditate for like maybe 15, 20 minutes and then work the other amount of time there. It's a lot of like, yep. okay, is this actually productive work or is this just busy work that I'm telling myself that I should feel good about doing? Like you can read a book. You, I'm not saying don't do that, but you can also like work and get results. So it's like finding a balance. Yep. If I'm going somewhere and I can't work while I'm traveling, yeah, okay, I'll listen to an audiobook. But if I'm sitting somewhere when I could be working, I'm not really going to 
spend that time listening to an audio book or ha- having that as non-productive time. So it's kind of like, okay, cut the shit. What's working? Focus on that. Do I care what other people think about that? No, that doesn't pay my bills. So focus on what's going to work, what I will get a return on investment from that will help me give more, basically. Oh, yeah. No, I love it. I think having these things in your back pocket and and at the ready so you can use them because these are not, in my opinion, like these are used in microseconds. You know, the decision on whether or not I'm going to work or I'm going to watch Netflix is done in a, in a microsecond. I think having these, as Charlie Munger says, in a mental lattice work in your head so you can easily access them rather than like, oh, yeah, like every once in a while when we talk about, oh, yeah, perspective shifts and all this kind of stuff and I'm going to die soon and where's my ROI, like all that stuff. You have to do it repeatedly enough so that you actually use them throughout the day because I don't know about you guys, but I use mental models probably 20 to 50 times a day. Like just in these little decision points throughout the day. Am I going to work out? Am I not? Right? Like all of these little things like, oh, that's why my enemy's card exists. Like all these little things, it's adding up all these little things over time. And then all of a sudden I have a dramatically different day and dramatically different results, plus or minus, right? Like good or bad, depending on those mental models and those, those perspective Wes, shifts. Can I, do you mind if we bring up John Walter up on the screen? Because he's someone this year totally. who went from living with his mom in Florida to traveling to his dream state california he's exactly. driving to work okay i was just gonna say he's working he wasn't working in florida he's working he's getting love on the reg from the apps and the, the ladies he's meeting out there oh yeah is he? Dude. yeah oh, i would love to talk no to john. Dude, i don't know dude john we've done oh, john said, yeah we've done we've done the scorecard by while driving before you know you can do it dude you can the way to do it safely <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Wes, send so, him a screen so, invite. Yeah, he please, can pick right, it up. A summary of his of his results. But I want to know what like send him the screen invite. He'll he can click it if he wants. So like I want to know what mental models he used to get those results. Like those are serious results, right? Because we've been doing the scorecard him and I every day, every day. I mean every yeah. day. Up there he is. Ray's influence. There he is. So go, go off, King. Now you're going to be responsible for him. Dying, <laughs> so you, set so. up, you set up the question. So, John, we cannot hear. I'm going to take a picture of the Maybe, John, right turn off uh, your John, Bluetooth. John, not or hear something. you. <laughs> yeah, you're going to witness a death in real time, Ray. So. Crash bang. <laughs> you're going to be able to see a yeah, the car rolling, where like the scene becomes the floor, the ceiling becomes the floor. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? How you doing? So, hey, John, we're gonna uh, uh, please, John. Great to see you, brother. Um, the audio is super terrible, so if it's okay, we just want you to riff on your updates on your goals um, because you've come such a far away, like Ray has said, and I know from experience, you showed up on the scorecard meeting. Dude, for probably what two years now, a year now, like something crazy. Um, so John, give and us let's some mute ourselves, brothers, while he does it. Yeah, man. Uh, so a lot of it for me has just been like consistency, doing the scorecard, um, checking in with myself a little bit better, developing as much like understanding of you know, what I'm doing, uh, and why I'm doing it. And, uh, yeah, that's been super helpful. Um, just trying to, uh, do like a full reset and accepting that things are going to be odd for a little while and embracing the discomfort has been super, super beneficial for me. Um, and then just kind of trying things, seeing what sticks on walls, um, being adaptable and uh, taking advantage of opportunities. It's been interesting. I'm uh, I'm where I'd really like to be uh, for a long term. I'm meeting people and uh, trying to set some kind of roots. Uh, I'm getting to uh, find people and situations that support me, if only in a short frame kind of uh, kind of thing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's been good. Um, I I feel like I have a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
huge change I've made over this last year, like being able to look at like, okay, what was I doing this time last year? Okay, I was just scoping out this area and seeing if it was where I wanted to be. And like now I'm here and then I have other friends who are like visiting the area and they're moving and you know, I'm, I'm getting this around myself with people who are starting businesses, going back to school, um, they're uh, raising families and I had a lot of options to go to uh, areas where I had friends who were like, yeah, come to Denver. Like we can get high and drunk all the time. And it's like, it's not really what I was looking for. So I'm, I'm glad that I found uh, a community of people that are doing things more like the way that I think that they should be done. And, uh, it's a challenge. There's a lot of things that are I, I can notice about myself, like how terrible I am at uh, deadlines and applying for uh, colleges and things like that. But um, you know, I'm I'm working on it, working towards it, and uh, fortunately, I got the scorecard and keeping up with Ray. It's pretty cool. I can mute for you. Hell yeah. Yeah, and John, let me ask you this: Ray started to give this the list of transformations that you've had over the last year if you don't mind highlight what are those transformations so you're living with your parents now you're off on your own a different state so what are some of those highlights if you could give it to the dudes well i don't know if you heard me uh you're still on mute my friend So, sorry about that. I missed what you said because I thought I was muting myself and I muted you. Yeah. So, so Ray started to give us some of the highlights of your big wins over the last year. So, from your perspective, what are those wins? So, one of the things he said was you moved from living at your parents' house to now you live in a different state on your own. So, what are some of those highlights? Um, so, yeah. Uh, one of the biggest highlights was just actually getting the change of scenery. Um getting to a place that I knew I wanted to be. When I was in Florida, I was doing some kind of like temporary, like let me help out my mom while she's having this surgery and she's worried about her house kind of thing. And ever since I've been here, I've been able to be like, okay, what matters to me? Um, you know, rather than slotting in other people's problems so that I could fix their problems rather than work on my own shit, you know? Uh, so that that was that was a huge thing. Uh, another win was just you know getting out here was a big thing. Um, you know I, I wanted to have everything set up for me by the time I, I got out here like job, know exactly where I'm gonna be like all that kind of stuff and um, I wasn't able to do that. so I just came out with you know the knowledge that I would have a couple of in-person interviews. Um, I went with the ones that felt right and even while I'm not feeling, you know, I'm not being, uh, it, it's not like my end all be all job kind of thing. I didn't think the first one out here was going to be, I, I still took advantage of the opportunities that allowed me to be closer towards what I'm looking to do and allow me to like start getting uh, community service hours for, um, school and stuff like that. So that's been another huge win and then uh i I would say just like my confidence overall with women has been you know very nice uh my reminders like i have a little phone reminder that comes up at 9 a.m every day it says you will die one day um i think that's just a good way of like not sweating the uh not sweating the small stuff and trying to stay focused. Um, and then just trying to break down things into uh, the systems that seem to work for me and understanding that like not everybody's system is gonna work for me. So I just need to do what's, whatever's gonna be best kind of thing. Dude, I love it. Congratulations, bro. Um, like holistically, you're exactly what the program talks about. Right, like how do you take from where you are, you identify the low hanging fruit, start to fix what you can, realize it's not going to be a perfect process and then just do it and then inspire everybody else so spot on bro we appreciate you and uh honor to fight by your side dude great job hell yeah thank you guys all right peace we're gonna let you go only because the audio is pretty intense yeah audio right, is terrible you. take it easy all right bro later what a beast man so um i remember when john 
started the program and Ray could probably comment on this as well. I remember when John started the program um, and I tell it to, this to guys all the time. It's just like, just do whatever you can. It doesn't matter where you're starting from. The only prerequisite is just that you want to get better. That's it. That's it. And, and, and get better in air quotes. It's just in relation to your goal. And John is just a shining example of that. Um, I remember. Did we lose John? Uh, we just cut him off because it was uh, crash. The audio or? was off. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Police the, or crash? the audio from the crash was just unbearable. Um, yeah. So, and it, it's not the visual, it's just the screaming that you'll never yeah, get out of your head. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, with the exactly. flames like engulfing his body. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Ray, what is your version of being on the sidelines of seeing John's growth? What is your narrative around that? And has it motivated you? Well, hell yeah, dude. It's just, there's nothing sexy about it. It's just showing up. It's the fundamentals, like Kaizen was saying, and like you say, it's the fundamentals. It's just showing up every day. For me, it's doing my scorecard every day. Yep. And it's not Same. a miracle transformation. It is a slow grind. Uh, like I said, um, I've been doing, I've been meditating on the scorecard almost every day for two years. And it really, now that I think about it, it's really only this year that I really feel the major, um, the, like the, I understand the difference it makes. Uh, so mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's the answer. I got to take a call. So um, it's the fundamentals. That's what John and I've been. All right, dude. Let's do that. Kaizen, any uh, any final uh, parting words of wisdom, brother? Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll throw that video that I was talking about in the Discord, and then I, I totally agree with uh, Ray. I was John was one of the first people that I remember. Uh, John, Jordan, and Troy, especially like those key first people. Also, Ray, I kept seeing over and over, and they were talking about the Romas. And that made me want to get into it. And then I felt like the more that you just, you're reminded of this kind of stuff, you're following the scorecard. I think if you just do that, yeah. you're going to see results. And like adding on to what you say, you don't, it's that old Zig Ziglar quote. You don't have to be great to start, but if you want to be great, you do have to start. So if you just start wherever it is that you're at and then add up that progress, it's amazing to see like how far you can come and not even like in a long amount of time, like the growth that you see with, especially like when you're doing the journaling as part of the scorecard, if you keep track of the journaling and then look in like three and six months, oh, it's yeah. crazy. Yep. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And do what I could say. It doesn't matter if you're trying to attract women, if you're trying to uh, attract money through business or you're trying to attract friends, whatever the hell it is. In my opinion, there is nothing more marketable or there's nothing more sexy than results. There, there, there is no replacement for results. Like, yeah, we can learn and Kaizen and I know, and Ray, you know too, you can learn copywriting, you can learn sales, you can learn all this kind of stuff, but there is nothing more marketable than results, period. Nothing even comes close. Um, so I appreciate, and, and uh, like I said all the time, honored to fight by your guys' side. You guys have an awesome weekend. Ray, thank you, brother. Kaizen, thank you, brother. Go crush it this weekend. Wait, I, Ray, I will not let you take five thousand dollars from me. Just so you know, I, I, I will not. I will cut out fat from my stomach myself, right? Just so I don't have to pay that same five thousand dollars to a doctor for liposuction. I will do it myself. So game on, my friend. So one sixty three for me and six percent. You said six percent body fat. Was that there? Six to seven. Okay. Yeah. Oh, six. Okay, so I can get up to six point nine nine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Game on, my friend. Keep doing it. All right, boys. See you Monday. All right, dudes. Thanks, guys. Later.